Hey, rest friends, I'm Meridian Fierro, and today we have a very special guest. It's an interview episode, so get ready. I am talking to big game Leroy. I'm super excited for you guys to meet him. When I show you the clips of him wrestling, your mind is going to be blown. You are going to be shook, okay? Shook. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get to the interview. So Leroy, thank you so much for joining me on the YouTube channel today. We're super excited to have you on. I'm super excited for everyone to get to know you because I think you are just a really, really incredible, talented wrestler. And I don't think there's oh, anyone else out there like you right now. So what got your interest in wrestling? Talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I've watched wrestling my whole life. I know it's super original. Um, <laughs> growing up, I always thought it'd be super, super cool to be a wrestler. Um, didn't actually think I could do it. I mean, I think I was kind of like, oh, I'm kind of a scrawny kid growing up. And uh... <laughs> But then as I got older, I was like, okay, I might as well try it before I get too old and get to the point where I work a real job and decide I probably shouldn't try it. Yeah. And I got into wrestling as soon as I was, uh, as soon as I graduated high school when I was 17. So I started wow. a little young and um, I sucked at it, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I guess I got to keep doing this. And I, I fell in love with the process and the grind. And um, I started training at the uh, House of Glory Wrestling School, uh, Amazing Red, Brian Excel trainers. And here we are. How did your family and friends uh, react when you when you told them, you're like, hey, I want to start training. I want to start doing this. Were they disappointed? Were they like all for it? Because, you know, people, families have mixed reactions on like what you want to do with your life. Yeah, um, it's really interesting because like I was saying the decision to be a wrestler, to train at least, was uh, something I made like later in the game, like around 14, 15. But I didn't start talking about it. Like I was talking about it in like high school and I was talking about it in like, and to my friends, like around that time, and I guess it wasn't until like I was 16, 17, I guess really right up until I started doing it, that I started talking about it with my family and talking out loud about it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a whole wrestler. I'm to be <laughs> cool at it. And this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, I think that they were okay as long as I went to, as long as I still continued my education. I still went to college and I still, you know, did the adulting things and stuff and <laughs> Maybe they thought that, I mean, maybe I would grow out of it and maybe they thought it'd be like a phase. But as soon as they saw, like, they came to my first, like, wrestling show, I think they kind of realized I was, I was pretty serious about this. If you're hurting yourself <laughs> intentionally and you're, you're, you're doing this, you're clearly really passionate about it. And as I started doing more and more in wrestling and I started actually wrestling and I started, like, kind of traveling a little bit, I think they realized this is what I want to do with my life. And, um, you know, I think... I think my mom once told me, she's like, oh, I better see you on TV or something. I think that that was always the thing. Uh, we are here for supportive family. We uh, applaud. <laughs> I mean, the expectations are really high, though. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially I think they had because they had to be in school, too. They were like, well, if he finishes school and then he still wants to wrestle, it's fine because he's got a degree. Like there's a, there's a trust thing in, in the back. You know, he can land on something else in case. But um, I think wrestling is working out for you. <laughs> I, I think so. Maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's a little bit, right? Um, so <laughs> yeah. you you mentioned um, your training school. Tell me a little bit about that. How did you get involved? How often do you train? Uh, the House of Glory Wrestling School. I was looking at a few different schools, and then I happened to find this one not too far from me. Uh, I'm, I live in Brooklyn, and then I found this one in uh, Ridgewood, Queens, and I was like, oh, that's not too far from me. And trained by, run by the amazing Red, who I used to watch on TV. I thought that was really cool. And... It seemed like a no-brainer at the time. And then once I started joining and I met everybody there, all the other students and stuff, I was like, oh, this is the place I got to meet, the place I got to be. Like some of my best friends in all of wrestling are from that place, you know, and out and it goes beyond wrestling. And I think that that's really, really, really cool. Um, yeah, and I, I, um, I don't train nearly as much there as I, I'm a little bit more of a nomad these days. I kind of try to train in different places and kind of try to learn different ways and different philosophies behind wrestling. And I feel like, uh, that's been a lot of fun the past year or so. I think I've really been doing that. Um, I mean, the pandemic has kind of ruined everything. <laughs> but uh, it's been a lot of fun to, like, learn from different places. Um, I've been training. I think I'm old now. So uh, I, it's been six years since I started training. Six years in July. Uh, so that was my six-year anniversary in wrestling. 
Um, so I was training there quite often. I remember my first two, three years, I was training every single Tuesday and Thursday because that was when a beginner class was. And mm -hmm. uh, it was crazy because like you just sacrifice so much every single Tuesday and every single Thursday, you just don't have like a life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's that hustle, that's the dedication. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you, so you do something that's really cool when you wrestle. So you are wrestling while you play a Nintendo Switch. Now, when you started, did you know that was something that you wanted to incorporate or did that just happen? Did you like one day step into the ring and you just still had your Switch and you're like, well, I guess it's happening. Um, it's really funny because, um, when I first started training, I always thought to myself like, okay, I... I think that I could probably be a pretty colorful guy and I'm pretty dorky and I'm pretty wacky and I'm, you know, uh, people seem to like me. So I was like, if I just dial that up, as everybody says, I could probably make people like me and I could probably get some traction. And I thought, okay, um, you know, instinctively I was like, okay, I'm a nerdy kid. I love anime. I love video games. I'm very much about that. And it's, it's me. So like no one could ever say, oh, he's playing an act or something like, no, it's, it's, it's me. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm not, the first video game wrestler guy probably like the sixth or seventh is my joke I'm like the sixth or seventh video game wrestler <laughs> um but after a while I was kind of trying to figure out a way to like kind of not just be like everybody else and not just have it be my gear or not just have it be my entrance have it like be in the ring and um I was uh going up to Jersey for a CZW Dojo Wars which is like their little training underground thing for a CZW and I was wrestling a girl for the first time and I try to be a good guy most of the time in wrestling. And I was still going to be a good guy for this. And I'm like, okay, how do I beat this uh, four foot eight girl and not look like a jerk and not look like a bad guy? So I was like, okay. Um, and I was literally joking in the car with the guys. I was like, hey, what if I'm just so stupid that I'm just playing a switch while I'm wrestling her? Like, I'm just that like animated, that, that dumb, that much into the game. And I wrestled them probably in front of like maybe 20, 25 people. But those 20, 25 people seemed to like it a lot. And they thought it was funny. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe I could keep working on this. Um, I, I think it was like five, six months before I tried it again in another spot in uh, Pennsylvania called PPW. And then it got a really good reaction. And then like even the clip of it kind of some other wrestlers, like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And I was like, all right, there's something here. And then I think it didn't really take off until the fall when I uh, debuted for Evolve Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that was like the first gift that kind of went like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> all right, there's a guy wrestling with a switch. Oh my gosh, he needs to wrestle Orange Cassidy and all that stuff. And then I started doing it some more and literally the next show I did at House of Glory, that's when it blew up and went viral and the internet exploded for me and my phone did not stop like, vibrating and going off for like four <laughs> days straight <laughs> i had to throw my phone to the other side of the room just to get some peace <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned um orange cassidy because you do give me that kind of vibe of it's the same technique but yours is i don't i have no idea are you do you go into the ring is the game actually in there do you have a backup switch? I yes, need to know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> This is the same exact switch. And I say this to everybody. Everybody's always surprised. This is the same exact switch I bought three years ago at a GameStop. <laughs> it's my only switch. There's no backups. I've switched my Joy-Cons a few times, literally just because of Joy-Con drift. Not, and also because I like different colors. <laughs> but it, my switch is perfectly fine. I, I put it home. I put it in the dock and play it at home as much as ever like i mean it's just it's my switch it's my baby <laughs> so it works is what you're telling me absolutely fully functional <laughs> yes after, after all of the hits that it's taken i i don't know how I, I don't know how much i believe that but we're gonna we're gonna stick to that story then <laughs> i mean nintendo makes a very durable hardware man like, it's sturdy i used to it's very sturdy very durable man <laughs> it's like the old motorola's then that are indestructible yeah, no. Yo, oh my gosh, Nokia ain't got nothing on Nintendo, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I want to talk to you about this uh, really big thing that happened. So you were on an episode of AEW Dark, and you had a match. It was a tag match um, against Santana and Ortiz. Talk to me about this. How did it happen? What were you feeling? Like, let me know. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I don't think it's too much of a secret that uh, Private Party are, like, two of my best friends in the whole world. And uh, so um, we started, me and um, 
me and EJ, my tag partner, we started uh, appearing on some of these Being the Elite skits uh, with yeah. Private Party <laughs> with the teddy bear, <laughs> uh, which is like the most random thing ever. Like we just, we just popped up in there. I mean, I just jumped in there and started beating up bones for no reason. So like, I yeah. mean, <laughs> You know, they tested us and stuff everything was it made us feel very safe and especially in florida where especially now we know they're very there's a lot going in on in florida okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah but for whatever it's worth aw did everything in their power to make all the talent especially us like local guys who aren't really contracted guys there or whatever to make us feel safe and a, a part of everything as well you know so i think that was really cool um and it, man it's just it was a stuff of dreams you know i i got to you know, guys who I've kind of looked up to and admired for like for years, guys like Cole Cabana, uh, Jericho, obviously, Kenny Omega, uh, guys who I've met before a few times, like Orange Cassidy and Trent and Chuck Taylor, who are still guys that I still look up to, obviously. Um, it was really, really cool to share a locker room with those guys. You know, it was really, really cool to be around, you know, legitimately some of the best wrestlers in our industry, you know, some of the most talented guys around the world. Um, and in the midst of a pandemic, it's not lost on me that like, oh, snap this happened in a pandemic yeah like, that's really cool that something positive could come out of something really 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 terrible but you know that's why i say like i am really grateful you know because like stuff like that you, you can't write this stuff sometimes you know you can't and like you have that forever it's, it's all over social media i remember people were talking about it and i was like hey i know that guy i was like i can't believe he was he was on tv how did you feel but what was the feedback that you got after after that happened uh well the feed on social media like uh it was amazing like literally uh the match happens and i i like the match is announced i'm sorry and flyer alone everybody's going crazy about it like my my phone is blowing up i was i was joking with my uh, ej that like my phone was blowing up almost as much as when i went viral and like it, it was it was pretty cool except this time it wasn't likes and retweets it was just messages from everybody every little random person i met on the indies every single random person i met on the street just going oh my gosh congratulations oh my gosh congratulations oh my gosh are you signed and i'm just like uh, hey, just, look. Just, <laughs> you know um it, it was it was awesome and um the feedback from the, from the locker room as well was really really inspiring really really positive like my friends you know private party were there Quinn and Isaiah are like the two best guys ever super positive super like super inspiring and like they were just like yeah you got this guys you guys deserve to be here you guys belong there um the locker room was pretty familiar with me and my work which was really inspiring and motivating because I'm like okay I know who I am so that's really cool you know I'm, I'm you know I, I'm my fear is always in wrestling that I'm just that kid who went viral and nobody really knows me they just kind of see me <laughs> but for them they to kind of see you on social media yeah, they just see my clip or whatever, but for them to actually go, oh, you're that guy. We, we, we know you. Like, that's that's cool. You know, and I, I think stuff like that is really motivating, really inspiring. And I'm like, okay, you know, the next time I get there and it, there will be a next time. There will be yeah. a, there will be an, another opportunity down the line. And um, I'm grateful for what I got just then, especially also like wrestling guys like Santana and Ortiz who came from the Bronx, who came from where I came from, trained with them a few times. They wrestled a whole ton in House of Glory. Um, they they beat the they beat the snot out of us for sure, but uh, it was a good learning experience, and that's what wrestling is, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's uh, it was just crazy. I, I was looking at the the responses that you were getting, and I'm like, oh my god, they love him. It's happening. Like, let's do this. And you had the the photo shoot with the official like AEW logo on the bottom, and I'm like, man, that just has to be like an out of body experience. Like, were you nervous at all? Were you scared a little bit? I'm always nervous. I mean, if you're not <laughs> nervous, then you don't care. But uh, I was definitely super nervous, but I felt at home. Like, I mean, it, I, not at home, but I felt really comfortable because I'm like, I feel like ever since I uh, evolved, really, I've kind of just been on this nonstop roller coaster ride that doesn't end. And like, for me, at first, it always felt overwhelming and it felt like, oh my gosh, everything's happening so fast. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for this, quote unquote. But then it's also like, you never know when you're ready for anything in life. And like, yeah. I happen to do what I love. I happen to do something that I've trained my whole life for. And even longer than that, I've dreamed my whole life to get to this point. So it's like, yes, I'm nervous, but it's like, this is what I wanted my whole life. This is what I've worked for. So I can be nervous, but I ain't gonna let it like overwhelm me. I'm not gonna let it stop me from doing what I gotta do, you know? So it, it's, it's awesome. It was awesome to take the pictures, awesome to be in the locker room. Like little things like meeting Vicky Guerrero and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like I loved watching Eddie my whole life. And like, this is the closest I'll get to meeting Eddie. And yeah. the little things like that mean everything to me, you know? <laughs> 
That's insane. I I congratulate you for for making it to to the AEW and you're just going to keep going. I'm I'm so excited to see what the future has for you. You're so wholesome. You are great. Thanks. You are entertaining. <laughs> and um I created a little special segment just for you called the switch up and I'm just going to ask you like a little questions like would you rather do this or would you rather do that? So, uh sure, first question, um if you could wrestle with anyone else's gimmick, whose would you pick? Hmm. Uh Ooh, that sounds really cool. Uh, my first guess would just be probably Orange Cassidy. I just want to. I just want a moment of just wearing the sunglasses, man. I mean, if we ever wrestled, you know, I mean, I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but like, it'd be really fun if he was playing my Switch. I was wearing his sunglasses. I put my hands in my pocket. And that would be really, really fun. I mean, speak it into the universe. Get a jean jacket just in case. You never know. You never know what could happen. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta find a nice jean jacket. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Um, if you had to wrestle while playing a non-portable gaming system, which one would it be? Technically, uh, I've wrestled with a Nintendo GameCube before. I use it as a weapon. Okay. Yeah. A few times, actually. A few times. That was actually like the start of the video game stuff, honestly, because uh, I had a I had a last man standing match with a guy named Ken Broadway, and uh, I thought to myself, okay, people expect thumbtacks, people expect chairs, kendo sticks, but what if I hit him with a GameCube? It's got a handle on it. It's it's kind of pretty, pretty... A GameCube is heavy. Jesus. Yeah, it's pretty hefty. <laughs> so I started beating him up with it. And it, it got a really cool GameCube chant. And that was the moment <laughs> where I was like, oh, people understood it. People didn't just think this was some random boombox. They didn't saw it. They got it. They understood why I was using a GameCube. And they, they loved it. And so that would be my go-to. Also, <laughs> one of my favorite systems ever. So The GameCube, really? <laughs> Yeah, Thank it's awesome. Was, uh, it's under, super underrated. Super underrated. I mean, I, I guess you could say that. Um, if you were at a show and you were not wrestling, but someone came up to you and said, all right, you either have the opportunity to be a ref, to be a ring commentator, a ring announcer, or a fan, what would you be? Ooh, all right. Uh, that's tough. So you see, actually, I started off in wrestling as a referee. Like, so I already oh. did that. A lot of fun. Um, I, I think refs are kind of an unsung hero in our, in our industry because, like, people kind of just don't really see them. I see more people getting them respect and uh, Twitter respect and whatnot, so I think that's really cool. But uh, refs, unsung heroes. But uh, in, the, in the sake of doing something different, I think I would love to be a commentator. I love wrestling, and I love talking about wrestling. I love coming up. I love, like, stories, and I love kind of telling that story. And, you know, rest, and commentators, the point of them is to make it easier to understand the story for the viewer, you know? So I think I'd have a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> That's, I mean, I, I think I... I would love to be a commentator. Commentators, I feel like they have fun because they, oh, they're wow. allowed to like, you know, tell the story a little bit more. You can have beef with other people in between commentating. Like, it's just, it's a world of fun. But I didn't know you were a ref. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it's so crazy because like, that's kind of how you start off in wrestling. Like my first thing ever, uh, six months in, I uh, was repping this match. And then it kind of led to my, my, my on-screen uh, debut because I was a crooked ref paid off and I just turned on everybody and was like yeah no oh, I'm not no. making the count I was paid off and I'm a jerk now and all that stuff so like it, it was pretty good like I look back on my startup and I'm like oh I was it's pretty pretty blessed because I didn't just debut in some random battle royal as, as a no name <laughs> I, I got to like do something of meaning and you know I, I think stuff like that is really cool and to think back on that maybe people don't always remember it but I'm like I think it was cool and I remember that <laughs> Well, Leroy, thank you so much for joining me today. I, I hope that everyone enjoyed it. Like, honestly, great conversation. You are a great guy. Let everyone know where they can follow you on social media, what you have coming up. Okay, well, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Big Game Leroy. Uh, my Facebook is Leroy Green. Uh, don't think anybody uses Tumblr, so I won't even bother with that. You know, I, I mean, you never know. You know, rest friends, we are versatile. We, have, we got a Pinterest. We got a TikTok. So man, a TikTok advertise. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I don't have a Tumblr anymore. But uh, yeah, you can primarily do those three. Um, the things I have coming up. So I'm actually going to Pittsburgh with the Polycult Mansion to uh Ooh. to wrestle for MVZ at Polycult number two, which is a lot of fun. So that'll be a lot of cool stuff. Um, I have a few other secret projects I can't exactly talk about right now, but I will say. Keep a lookout. You're gonna see some 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 some, some, some taping, some some so, some safe 
socially distanced tapings. Um, socially distanced taping, six feet. Six yes, feet. yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So um, there's going to be some cool stuff. I'm really excited. There's other stuff that haven't really been um, finalized and set in stone yet, but, you know, fingers crossed, a lot of cool stuff. Um, oh, man, it's hard because in this pandemic, you can't just go, yeah, this is my date for the next four or five weekends because that's yeah. not really how things are happening. We're kind of just uh, filming stuff and we can't really speak on it until it's already out there. Uh, yeah. but I do have my Pittsburgh date, uh, September, I believe it's September 5th. Yes. September 5th. I know dates. I'm good with dates. <laughs> September 5th. I'll be in Pittsburgh. Uh, if you haven't already, you know, if you live in the area, I guess, you know, let's, let's, <laughs> let's try. I think it's, I think it's already sold out because there's supposed to be a massive, uh, a limited capacity, but, uh, you can do your best. I, I have it all over my Twitter and my Instagram. You can find the link, see if you can get the email, see if you can get some tickets. That's, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, Besides that, you know, we got to wait and see, you know, I think this pandemic has been both, it's been really like crappy. I'm not going to lie. I've been up and down with my, like my whole mood and stuff. And I know everybody has been, but I think that there's a lot of like, at this point, we're starting to get to the other side of it. And I'm, I'm hopeful that we're getting to the other side of it. I see re more wrestling shows happening. I'm, I'm happy with how some of these shows are going about it with the social distance requiring everybody to wear masks and stuff. And I, I think some of that stuff is really cool. And then also people just being super creative. Cinematic wrestling is like the buzzword, but like yes. I think some stuff like that is really, really cool. And I have so many ideas. Like I, I just worked on this project earlier this week that I think so many people are gonna really enjoy, especially because it's like it's me and you already know. Yeah, there's already a lot of stuff. People are like, oh man, when are you gonna when are you gonna just be a whole Street Fighter character and stuff like that? And I'm just like, well, I'm not like, oh. for y'all. <laughs> y'all are gonna like what you see. So um, I just stay tuned to my social media. There's going to be a lot of fun content also coming out there. Um, I think that's the best way to engage people now these days, just, just being funny, just being creative. And I think that that's what wrestling and art needs to be. Yeah. Well, Leroy, thank you so much. Again, I, I really appreciate it. You taking time out of your day, your busy wrestling life to, to be on Rest yes. Friends. And I hope everybody, I'm going to put the links for Leroy's things down below. So make sure that you go follow him on social media because he's got things coming up. He can't say too much right here, but you know, that's the business. We understand. Until next time, Rest Friends, we will see you.